Hey you! Did you know that tomorrow is the last day to get the merch? Yes! So if you are a sucker for punishment, make sure that you pick up a t-shirt, hoodie, or mug, or a sticker, because after tomorrow, this is it! This design will not be available again! There's going to be one other limited edition design, and that's an ugly sweater. Stay tuned for that. Links in description, iCard section, and pinned comment. Cause when you're a grain, you come in like a hurricane! And here we go, so in all technicality, touching it should be enough to change the heat. <gasps> oh, wow! I am so excited! Hey Greens, I can't express how excited I am for this, but let me, let me try anyways. Think of it as your most anticipated or the dream vacation that you've always wanted. And it's the night before, where you're like, oh, I am so close to going. But at the same time you're like, oh crap, I forgot to pack. That's me, all the time. I only pack like half an hour before I go on vacation. Do you pack early or do you pack late? <laughs> Talk about being off topic, huh? So as you saw in the preview of this video, I am so excited because we're going to be making projects that will be, yes, change of color. A few weeks ago, I was on Reddit and saw a post that looked really epic. I mean, so epic. The idea behind it is that you can touch something and it changes color based on, I guess, like thermal. That's what it's, I don't know why I'm doing this, but that's what it is now. It's like thermal color changing contact thing. Don't ask me to explain the science because I am here to craft and to craft only. So it definitely caught my attention and I was like, well, I need, I need me some of that. I need and so when I contacted the people at Solar Color Dust and asked them to send me some stuff to play with, they were more than happy. Not sponsored, not affiliated, but yes, full disclosure, they did send, they, they did. English, please not today. Communicate. They did send me all of the materials in here. So if you're interested by anything, I'll leave all the information in description box below as well as a coupon code for you grains. Again, it's not a sponsor link, it's not an affiliate link, it is purely for you grains if you want. All right, let's let's stop delaying. I really want to open this because I want to play with some material. Maybe I should stop. I should stop. I'll leave it right here. I want to play! I'll be honest, I kind of forgot what's in here because I'm like, I want this one, and I want that one, and give me all of it! So, let's rediscover what's in there together first. So for those of you who don't know, what, what we're going to be creating essentially are going to be resin pieces. And resin hardens kind of like a plasticky glass. It starts off as, as a liquid. But what you put on the inside of that resin will dictate pretty much the effects it's going to have. And that's why I'm really excited with these pigments because... I love colors so much. So the first thing I picked up is this thing here. I needed two of them because you can't have enough. And this here is like an air sprayer where you put your liquid that you want to spray and you have an aerosol over here. So this is really cool because one of the projects we're going to be doing requires it to be in a mechanism like this. And then we have an art resin kit. I've never tried art resin itself. I've always used either the ones from the Home Depot or I've gotten my resin from Sophie and Toffee. But I'm really, really excited to try art resin because people say amazing things about this resin. Can I say resin again? Resin, 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 resin. And then molds. Lots and lots of molds. First is this bear lion hippo mold, which is absolutely adorable. And then we have cow pig chicken mold. These are these are really cute too. I don't know why I was I was so into it. I'm like, I need me a chicken mold. And that's because I have my own burb and I love him so much, even though he's a weirdo. Let's take a look at him right now. Yeah, he's weird. I think he takes on after me. And then I have six different sizes of spheres, ranging from the biggest one over here, which is about three inches, to the tiniest one, which is maximum about an inch. I haven't used two-part molds like this one, so I'm curious if I'm gonna mess it up and it's just gonna leak everywhere, because that's... It's very possible with someone like me, isn't it? Don't say yes! <laughs> and then the next mold, which I am really excited about, are two little unicorn, the sleepy unicorn heads. There's one in the bigger size over here, and we have a smaller, cuter, chibi one. I feel like I want to make like 20 of these. Do I have time for that? Ain't nobody got time for that! And last but not least, a chess set mold piece. 
Part of me thinks that we can probably fill one side twice in order to make a full set, a full, a full rounded 3D piece. I don't know if we're going to be able to or if we have time to since the only day that we have sunny is one day this week. Thank you, Canada. We only have one sunny day this week and I need the sun. You'll see why later. So when it comes to the color changing the pigments or the play around that we can have, the first one I have is a thermal dust. And what's really neat about this is that it changes color when it gets cold. I may or may not have taken a little bit of everything. Next we have color that changes in sunlight. I'm actually going to demonstrate this as soon as I finish explaining this little part here so bear with me for a couple more seconds. Next similar to the cold one we have color that changes in heat. They also sent me a couple of extras which have glitter and stirry spoons as well as a mini little heated pad kind of thing. I have these and they're really good for my back whenever I have like back pains. All right let's play a little bit. This one here is color changing in sunlight but since it's raining outside and it's absolutely gross the idea is that it needs UV light I happen to have a UV light this is supposed to change from yellow to blue so let's put our UV light for just a couple of seconds and we should be able to see the effect and ta-da oh the light turned off Ta-da! So you can see where the spot of the light is. It created a blue color. Blue to green. It looks like it has some kind of alien disease. Coral to blue. White to a vibrant blue. And look at it disappear so quickly. That is crazy. White to violet. White to green. Oh, this is my favorite. This is the one that got me really into this. Okay, you ready? Orange to blue. Well, it doesn't show too much here, but I'm really excited about that. This one. And yellow to red. And as its own category, last but not least, liquid crystal. This one here, once applied to a black surface, should be able to, once you touch it, change colors like a mood ring. So depending on the heat that is in different parts of your hands, should give us a different color. This... This is, this is going to be the piece de resistance. That's enough exploring. Let's start making pieces and let's have fun with color changing. Do you think I'm joking? Look at all this stuff, stuff everywhere. All right, so my first question is, does it work with UV resin? The awesome people at Solar Dust definitely knew that it works with two-part epoxy, but they're like, UV resin? I'm not sure. So let's test it out. And for this, I'm going to take yellow to blue because I love color changes that are very extreme. And I'll be using this mold over here, the um, chest mold and I'm gonna do the horse the knight. For those of you who don't know, the difference between epoxy resin and UV resin is that epoxy resin is two parts, you mix them together, and you leave it sit for about 12-ish hours. Whereas when it comes to UV resin, all you have to do is put it on your windowsill for about half an hour to 40 minutes and it should harden. Or if you're like me and you have a UV light, it's about two minutes. All right, so let's take a scoop. I feel like it might be much, but better safe than sorry. Come on. There we go. This part's going to be really interesting because we do have a UV light that activates the color, but it also activates the liquid to hardening. I'm curious how it's going to look like. All right, let's harden it and leave it there for a minute and let's see what happens. One minute, 37 seconds later. And the answer is... Nothing. That is weird. So that means it doesn't work with UV resin. Here's our night. Let's try again with the UV resin because I'm not convinced. And nothing! No! Oh no! I thought I could save time by using UV resin to make all the projects, but no. Let's try with the heat and cold ones. Maybe those will be different. Actually, I'm still not convinced. Let's let's take this outside. Let's take it outside! That, that sounded like I'm, I'm, I'm challenging you, but I'm not, because don't hurt me, please. All right, so let's give it a try and come on, buddy. I see some color change. All right, as you can see, there's some color change, but not quite. Maybe my ratio was off. Let me put double the amount and let's try again. So here's the double amount of the powder. Let's see if it changes color. And surprisingly, the answer is no. UV resin and the solar one do not work. The slight color change is there, but it's just, it's struggling. Whereas if we take the powder in its pure form, watch it change right before your eyes. And here it is again indoors and let's put it under UV light and here it is. Uh, wait, wait a minute. Let's try the one with the uh, double powder now. Off you go. And after. Oh, the color goes really quickly. And so I'm starting to suspect that the uh, UV one probably has to do with the Canadian sun. Canada, 
thank you very much for maple syrup and hockey, but not so much for your son. And so as you can see under an actual UV light, the color goes from dark to light pretty quickly. But there is a color change. Which means, in theory, the ones that have to do with hot and cold temperature should be okay. Let's give it a try. So let's test out the one that changes with heat, which goes from black to turquoise. I'm going to be boiling some water and pouring it on top of the finished piece. So this is interesting. I love, I love experimenting so much. This is really exciting because we're going to start hardening it now, but something that you grains may not know is that when you harden it under a UV light, the resin gets really hot. Again, there should be an expectation that it's going to harden it, but at the same time, should change its color? Let's find out. <gasps> Did you grains see that? Oh me good. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it under, I got goosebumps, I got goosebumps. I'm gonna leave it under the light for a minute and let's look at it once it's done. Moments later. And yes, all right, it changed color. You grains can't see it too, too well, but it is very much a turquoise. And just so you know, yes, the resin piece is still hot. So once it cools down, it's in theory going to go back to black. All right, let's bring this outside and play with cold and hot water and watch it change colors. So as you can see in Canada, it's pretty cold. Let's finish it off by making it even more black. And here we go with hot. This is good. So Canadian is, is the Canadian sun. We're just going to focus on things that work in the Canadian weather. So since I have six different colors for heat changing, I'm going to go ahead and use these adorable animal molds and let's, let's watch them change color. So obvious rookie nerdy crafter mistake. Molds that are not transparent will not be okay with UV resin. So the answer is no. So this thing here goes in the trash. <coughs> oh, I didn't know the salt was coming out. Let's play. So instead, we're going to go with a transparent mold that has cute little bunny, bear, and kitty, and various other adorable shapes, because why not? In addition to pouring into the tiny, cute little molds the individual colors, the leftovers of that same color, I'm going to be pouring it into the unicorn shape. That is going to be really cool to see all these different colors into one mold. This is probably not enough protection at all. Make sure that you're wearing stuff when working with resin. And let's go ahead and unmold these pieces. I did take the soft type resin, so that's why it's a little gooey. And last but not least, our colorful unicorn. I can't wait to see it switch from colors to colors. That's gonna be outside, it's gonna be nice. Just hope it doesn't break. Getting undressed. Struggle is real. One eternity later. There we go. Oh, that is so cute. I think I have a new favorite mold. So to get these pieces sticking to each other, I have to use flex tape. Yes, flex tape. It works as advertised. All right, here goes the hot water. Here goes the cold water. And hot water again. All right, unicorn time. Let's see what happens with hot water. It technically shouldn't change that much, but let's let's see it. Ermi good. All right, time for cold water. Holy smokes. What a huge difference. Let's do hot again. And cold. I think that is officially the most outdoors I've gotten all week. I really love introverted outdoor activities like camping, I promise. All right, so now what I want to do is use the liquid crystal. And as I saw on Reddit, it was really cool being able to leave those little fingerprints and handprints where the color would change. So I definitely want to try that with our little unicorn, this time the bigger mold. So I'll be using the art resin. It's going to be the first time I ever experienced this. So I'll let you know what I think about that too. And so as with most epoxy resins, you have to mix a one-to-one -one ratio of the 
the resin and hardener. Once that's done, I added a little bit of a colorant, poured it in, and now we wait. Anywhere between 12 to 18 hours. If you don't have a special colorant, you definitely can use acrylic paint. Just make sure that you wait a little longer because it will take longer to harden. I poured the resin back out into the cup because it is way too bubbly. I've waited about 10 minutes like I do with any of the other resins I use, and this one's too bubbly. I'm going to pour it anyways because we only have 45 minutes to work with it, and then I'm going to use my Sophie and Toffee two-part resin, which as close as possible to bubble free. Twenty-four hours later. Here we are the next day. I am really excited to see what the art resin is like. For those of you who work with art resin, let me know its optimal condition. So let's start with this one. And again, unmolding is going to be fun, like undressing. And here it is. It is a little bubbly on the top part here, but I kind of expect that because the way that the mold is made makes it so that the bubble has nowhere else to go almost. But other than that, I think it's a pretty good base. Next, our Sophie and Tuffy. I really like those molds. And again, I expected the accumulation of bubbles down here because it gets stuck. So probably my suggestion would be to fill up to here, try to pop as many bubbles as possible, and then continue filling up. But I think we have two good bases. So according to the instruction, this, this, this is what I'm so excited about. The final awesomeness. So all we have to do is shake well and spray from one foot away. We should do about five to seven coats. And of course, since I don't want to mess up my desk, I'm going to be using a little box and the twirly twirly Lazy Susan to turn it around and get all the sides. let this sit for another 15-20 minutes on its final coat. It is pretty hard to get an even mist, even though I'm really far. It still comes out pretty clunky like this, but I can already start seeing the colors accumulate. So because I like to test things out, I'm going to go with the pure form, and I'll use it on this little one over here. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just a little salty. This much. Because as I'm spraying it and heating it up, I'm getting, oh uh, my god, I'm getting so many little crusty things over here that you can easily push out. My guess is probably because this was too close, and also the fact that the sprayer seems to be letting out much, much thicker bits of water. Thicker? Denser? Larger. That's what she said. So I'm going to have to start this one over, and unfortunately I did use half the bottle. So I'm going to go ahead and try the next product, which is a sprayable concentrate. And they say ideally for that one, if you don't want crusts like that one, it's always better to use the liquid crystal. I mean, it's cool. I'm gonna go wash it under to make sure that we can at least get something similar to the project that they showed with the tumbler that changes color, or even that really cool dragon head that also changes color. So I would say attempt number one, fail, fail. fail. Meanwhile, the tiny one that I've been using a brush on, it's a little splotchy, but we're getting somewhere. So I'll keep painting this with different coats. Meanwhile, I'm gonna wash this one and uh, start over with the air spray. All right, another issue. While you're actually painting this with a brush, the layer underneath starts peeling off. We're probably better off dabbing it and not, not this, just this. <laughs> Good and since it's because the resin is very smooth and the liquid crystal is water-based, I'm going to go ahead and spray one coat of Mr. Super Clear just so that there's something a little more gritty for it to hold on to. Alright, so I'm sitting here trying to spray this thing, but it's just air coming out even though I've diluted this as per the instructions. It seems like you really do need an airbrush ideally rather than this because it's splotchy. Sometimes it'll spray, sometimes it won't. And I promise, I'm not at a big angle, there should be enough liquid. Oh, there we go. And there we go again. It comes and it goes whenever it wants! There we go. And it's gone again. Hermie good. Finally, after, this is just the second coat, and we can already see that the color is starting to show. So I think I'm gonna do two more coats and wait in between uh, as naturally as possible without burning it. So I've been pretty much waiting and waiting and waiting between each and every coat. And I'm going to be putting a coat of UV resin just to keep it safe. Oh, how cool is that? As you can see the resin heating up, the color is actually also changing because it's heat sensitive. That is so fun. That is crazy weird. I love it so much. I am so happy because it finally worked.
So here it is after the coat of resin. And of course, I'm going to go ahead and try and reset the colors. But you can see immediately, once we start putting a little bit of heat, depending on your fingers, my, mine are usually cold, so I don't know if it's going to work. Yeah, I figured. But at least the other side, look at that. Based on the heat, I'm sure if we hold it this way, let, let's... Oh, there you go. See? I'm going to reset the color by putting it in the freezer and then bring it back out. I don't know about you grains, but my hands are usually pretty cold, so... All right, my whole trick is not enough, so I brought a hot water bottle just to make sure my hands are normal people hand cold. In all technicality, touching it should be enough to change the heat. <gasps> oh, wow! Oh, that is so cool! That is so neat! Okay, I'm touching it lightly on the other side. Okay, let's put a whole hand. Let me just warm up my hands. Ready? <gasps> That is so cool. And depending on where the heat is, you're going to get a different color. What? That is so neat. It's like magic. <gasps> How long, I wonder. It doesn't even need to stay that long. I'm sure the other side is warm now. Look at that. It probably just needs a few seconds. So I'm just going to enjoy doing this with you grains. Look at that. Look at that. Let's go over here. So fun. Look at that that. <gasps> it, it goes away pretty quickly too, so you can keep playing with this. I'll probably lose myself. So in essence, we've experimented with three of the same liquid crystal products. The first one, the pump spray, did not work. The little paint pot, for some reason, ended up being stuck in this color. So it refuses- oh, actually never mind. It does change color, but it looks really splotchy and again, we're getting crusts for some reason, even though I barely even use the heat from very, very far. Similar to this one. So it seems like the concentrate in addition to the spray is the best combination to be able to do a heat thermal color changing effect. So is this product finicky? Yeah. Is it fun? Yeah. Once you get the technique right, it is absolutely awesome. Out of the three products that you grains saw today, the solar color changing, the heat color changing, and the one that is by touch of body temperature, which one of these three do you find the coolest and would want to use? And also, what would you want to use it on? I think a car would be pretty neat with the temperature touch one. This week's shoutouts go to Big Panda, Raven Gacha, LPS Day Dream Girl, Gidri Anuzien, Unicorn, Janaka Baguar, Cat's Corner, Jane K. Whitlock, Keely Harris, Justin Anime Fan, Miss Malevolent X, Sienna K. 15, Lisa the Nutter, and also don't forget that tomorrow is the last day for the Sucker of Punishment merch because after that it is gone. Bye bye. Bye bye. If you want to shout out in my videos, don't forget to hashtag Notification Squad in the comment section below within the first five hours of your video's release, or hashtag NerdyCrafter on Instagram or Twitter anytime with any of your creations. If you want to watch the previous crafting video, make sure you check up here. And if you want to watch something salty because you need salt in your life, make sure you check it down here. Until then, I will see you grains in the next video.